Hi, this is Priscilla with Blue Wave Fit, and welcome back to our holiday survival series. It is week three, and it is also Thanksgiving week. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the food journal and what type of things you should be looking for when you're writing down what you're eating. Just remember, even if you're not writing it down, but you're still eating it, it still counts. So just keep that in mind. Uh, hopefully you can see here on the whiteboard what we're going to be talking about, and if not, I will be saying it so you can hear it from me. But we are going to be talking about nutrition, and underneath here you can see I've got this continuum from worse to better. And I am going to say that there is no perfect diet out there. So please put out of your mind that there is some perfect place that you are supposed to end up, and if you're not there yet, that you don't have a good diet. That is just untrue. And what I would like for you to get out of this is some ideas and some guidelines that you can come to your food journal with to be able to determine whether you're on the right track or whether you have some more work to, to do. So we're starting with what I said is this worse to better. And as a trainer, I go through my clients' journals from time to time and I look at certain things. These are not listed necessarily in the order of importance but just simply things that I look for and things that you can look at and figure out where you stand. So let's talk, let's just go through these. First is fruits and vegetables. I definitely look to see how many servings of fruits and vegetables my clients are eating on a regular basis. And in general, the better number here is five. We're gonna put our worst number as zero and you're probably somewhere in between. My suggestion to you is if you are of far from this five that you just add one serving a day. So if you're at one per day, all you do is just try to increase to two and do that for about a month or so. And I would say that that's a good rule of thumb across all of these parameters is just to make one change per month and let your body get it used to your new diet. Because if you make too many changes too fast, it will strike back and you will not be able to maintain that. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. The whole grains and fiber number, this goes hand in hand, and there is a number you want to shoot for. For my ladies, you want to have about 25 grams per day of fiber, and for my guys, 30 grams per day. And I'm going to put on this worse here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just put zero. Our American diet kind of puts us at a 10 to 12 gram per day number. So most of us have to work a little harder to get down to what's considered a healthy amount for our body. Obviously, there's, um, there's some room here, and you don't want to go overboard, right? Because there are natural consequences to that, which will keep you at your house. So you want to stay here around a reasonable number. The third thing I look at is protein, and it depends on what my client's trying to do. If they're trying to add lean mass, or they're trying to get stronger, if they're aggressively trying to get stronger, that's going to determine how much protein they'll want to consume because protein is what repairs and rebuilds and allows you to build more. And so you want to make sure that you at least have enough to repair what you're breaking down. So if you're working out a lot, you need to make sure you're eating your protein. How much should you eat, though? Well, in general, one to two grams per pound of body weight. And I would suggest if you're really like you're a guy and you're a young guy, you would you would go more toward the one and a half to two grams per pound. Um, for those that just want to make sure that they're maintaining, they're getting good healthy growth, one gram per pound is fine. And I'm going to say on the flip side that it's above or below that. So if you are less than a half gram per day or per pound, excuse me, then you're probably not getting enough in your diet to really give it what it needs to repair. And I'm talking here if you're active. Now, if you're just sitting around and doing nothing, you can probably get away with that and be just fine. The flip side, if you are consuming more than two grams per pound of your body, uh, you're, you're just eating too much and your body's getting rid of it. So there is a good number, there is a range here, and you wanna stay within that healthy range. The next thing I look at is how much processed food or how much do they eat out? And for me, more than anything, it's about the amount of salt that they're consuming and the amount of fat that they're consuming. And a lot of times we just don't know. I think the food journals have done a good job, the, especially the apps out there, at trying to list restaurants and what they offer. And those num numbers can be pretty surprising. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of times we just don't know what we're eating. So I normally take a look at how much they are consuming on a weekly basis that's just out of the house. And I would venture to say zero to one servings per week would be a good good goal to go after. 
um, if they've got more than three, if it's greater than three servings, uh, normally this, especially if they're trying to lose weight, it can just wreak havoc. But the number of calories that they're consuming and what they're consuming, it just really can be a setback. So you want to take a look at that, make sure that you're trying to go as natural as you can. The next three, or the last three, I should say, kind of go hand in hand. Water, most of us know that we should be drinking eight glasses a day or 64 ounces. Don't want to go overboard on this either, especially if you don't drink a lot. And all of a sudden you get gung-ho and you're just going to drink a whole bunch. It, you know, your body needs time to make adjustments, so you want to go gradual to that. Uh, I guess I'll put zero on this side. If you're not drinking any water, that would be a red flag to me. Alcohol here, moderately speaking, it is for women one uh, serving or I guess one glass, you could say, or for men two. Well, I guess it would just we'll just put drinks here. How about that? Two drinks per day. So it's a little different based on if you're a guy or gal. And the flip side for ladies, if you consume more than three drinks in one day or if you're drinking more than seven drinks per week, that would be considered excessive or heavy alcohol consumption. And guys, it is four drinks per day or 14 per week. That would be considered heavy. Now, this is just from a health standpoint. This is even talking about calories. So if every glass of wine or every beer that you're drinking is 150 calories, you can do the math and do the multiplication to figure out how many extra calories that you are consuming. And I will tell you, alcohol does nothing for you. There's no nutritional value for it. Save, we could talk about wine and the benefits from that, but alcohol in and of itself does not add anything to um, nutritionally to our body. It is simply calories put in and it is actually higher than a protein and a carbohydrate gram. Both of those will give you about four grams or four calories per gram, and the alcohol will give you seven calories per gram. So it's even heavier than those other two forms of food. The last thing I have on here is caffeine. There is some benefit to caffeine. Too much um, can also cause problems. So about 400 milligrams is considered healthy. Anything greater than that, of course, this is a generalization. Everybody's a little bit different. Anything greater than that, though, can, can cause problems. So you just want to take a look. This is uh, equivalent to about four cups of coffee, a couple of ener energy drinks per day, and I think about 10 sodas, which is a lot of soda. So that's a high number of your drinking soda. And so all of these kind of go hand in hand because the more caffeine you drink, it's a diuretic, the more the body's trying to get rid of it. And so if you're not, if you're high on your caffeine and you're low on your water, it can have a double debilitating effect. And so as a trainer, that would be a red flag to me that there's some things that need to, to change so that you can function properly and really be able to work out hard and to make progress on your goals. So here is a list of some different things you can look at when you put your food journal together and you're looking at it day by day. And remember that wherever you stand in each of these, that your goal is not to be perfect. It's not necessarily to have everything on here at the right column, although some of you will, and I think that's great. That, that affirms that you're doing the right things. But to remember to take one step at a time to move toward that side of the spectrum so that ultimately you can be a healthier you. So your challenge this week is to do a little grading on your food journal and identify one thing that you might be able to do to move yourself toward that spectrum. And since it's Thanksgiving week, what better week than to take a look at some of the things that we're eating. So good luck this week. Make some posts if you want down at our hashtag HolidaySS2014 or you can check out our website at www.bluewavefitocala.com. Thanks everybody.